Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to our run through of the new corporations in turmoil. Uh, this is Cardboard from Mars. I'm Nima, as ever, with my pal Nate. Hey, Nate. Hey. So, uh, yeah, let's let's go through the rest of the corporations we didn't get to last time. What's up next? All right, so we've got Mons Insurance. Okay, Mons. So you start off with forty-eight money. You increase your ME production plus four, and all opponents decrease their ME two. Holy cow! Um, the effect, however, says that when any when any player causes another player to decrease production or lose resources, you have to pay the, the victim three money. Wow, this is another really interesting core, huh, Nate? Man, they did again. They just did a great job with these corporations. Um, number one, this is just very flavorful, right? Like, yeah, it's super is, thematic. Yeah, and it's like literally like an insurance corporation, and like like in real life, the insurance companies are evil and they make all the money, and, but <laughs> right. you know then they have to pay it out. If there were a mechanism to to deny people's claims, then it would be really good. I know, right? Yeah, they, they, there needs to be an insurance adjuster card for this. Like roll, roll a D6, and if it's a 6, then they just can't flat cancel it. <laughs> right, um, right. I uh, think this is a complicated card. Um, and it, it's this is the kind of card that, I mean, you obviously start with a huge advantage, right? I mean... Plus four to your economy to start with is very good. And then nerfing everybody by two is also pretty good. I mean I mean really? if you if you play like hackers on somebody on turn one or something where you reduce their economy by two, it's like that's pretty devastating. Yeah, this that starting condition is so good. Um, now it makes me makes me think that the effect kind of balances it out, or at least that's the idea. So, like, you know, when would this kind of stuff happen? Okay, so let's say you play a card like Ants. Um, anytime, anytime that person who played it reduces someone else's um, microbes, assuming it's not you, you have to pay the person who uh, lost their microbes. So there's a lot of these kinds of cards. It's well, not ants, just... ants in particular is annoying because it's like something that could happen every turn. You're just like, right. boom, minus three, minus three, minus three. Right. Same thing with predators. But like, so that this this can also happen with any card that reduces resources, like um, asteroid. Any of the cards that decrease plants, and there's a lot of them in this game. So. I could see this being a case where, yeah, that money advantage really uh, deflates after a while. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, as with any insurance company, I mean, it just comes, it, it basically comes back to how many times do you think this is going to be triggered? So yeah. over the course of a game, let's say, let's say it's a 10 generation game and, and you generated 40 cash off of the, you know, plus four to start with or whatever. The qu and then and then you know you can also factor in the fact that everybody else lost twenty cash, so let's say something around you know sixty sixty cash. You don't just want to break even with this corporation, right? Like right. you want to you want to make money with it. So let's say your goal is to to generate at a minimum twenty cash with Mons Insurance. That means that if this ability gets activated, like. 12 or 13 times you're you're okay but more than that no so like the question is is, is will this ability get in in you know employed you know more than 12 or 13 times in a game yeah i so even so even if it does i think mons the advantage of mons is you get <clears throat> excuse me a good early start and you're decreasing everyone else's early early game. You're you're decreasing their chance of having an early a good early game. So even if you were to break even on this ability, I think you get a boost in the beginning. I think that's that's a really good point. Yeah, I hadn't really thought about that that way. Um, but as with almost every card in this game, you know the production cards and stuff. It they're better to be played early. 
um, you know, because you get the cumulative effect of, of, of that ability over the course right. of many genera. That's a really good point. Um, and, and you really like, you're maximally hurting other people with this minus two to their cash production. Exactly. So, yeah, I would, uh, I would say Mons and I think you agree is, is sort of like the credit core of this pack. Like, like it's just kind of generically good. You know, you get a good amount of money. Uh, there's no tags per se, but uh, you, you get a versatility. Do you, would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, one thing that is, one thing that's bad about this corporation is that a lot of the cards, it makes a lot of the hate cards, cards that, it makes it worse for you to play them. So for right. example, like if you have Virus, like this is a card that if you just sort of draw it at some point in the game, you're pretty happy and it's it's cheap. Sometimes it's free. Sometimes you even make money if you have like media group or something like that. But in this case now, whoever you hit, you're going to have to pay them three cash. Yep. So like in yeah. some ways it really changes the way that you're going to play cuz you, you don't you don't want to be paying out to people. Right. Yeah, if you if you play Mons, you absolutely do not want to take hate cards. <laughs> it's the worst thing you could do. And you don't want other people to take them either. So I guess, I guess it, one benefit is that people are going to be less likely to hit you with that stuff too, because um, yeah, right. like they're like because if they hit you, you don't have to pay anything out. Like they're going to want to hit other people. Yeah, and I, I think this is, might be contentious between us, but like I think it makes it less likely for anyone to play hate cards. Like, um, so let's say you're a three-player game, one person. Uh, plays a hate card against your your other opponent. Um, I think they're. I personally think they're going to be less likely to do that because that third opponent will get three money. Now it's it's the it, the money comes from Mons, so it's not so bad. It's not like it came from them, but they they will know that that person they played the hate card against will get three money. So I think it might it might sway that a little bit. That's your new nickname, Mons Money. Mons Money. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I disagree. I think like if you're if you're playing Mons uh, Insurance, and uh, and and I'm playing against you, um, I'm gonna play every single hate card I can against anybody just to make you pay them out. Like I'm I'm just gonna be like, oh yeah, I'm in. Right. But in a three player game, for example, it doesn't. It could be four player too. But like that the person you're playing the hate against is going to keep getting money off of it. Yeah, but like think about it this way. Let's say I play Virus and I play it against, you know, player 3 and I take two of their animals and then you have to pay them 3 cash. Like they still lost 2 points and you lost 3 cash. It almost makes the hate card better. <laughs> right? Like it, yeah, it, no, it, it I, almost I means that it hits both of you guys. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know. I, I still think it's very good, even if you play it the way I just described. But like, I, I don't know. If for a, for a a minor hate card, I think someone might second guess that. I anyway, um, it's, just, it's a it's a minor point. So I think uh, all right. So uh, down to brass tacks. What are you going to give it as a grade? Um, well, r real quick, I want to talk about a milestone fight with this. I think it. I think it's just much like Credit Core. It's just kind of generically good, and you can go for a lot of different milestones. Um, so I, I would probably give this an A minus. Really, you're gonna go A, a minus for the Mons, huh? I think so, because like, there's no guarantee that people are gonna play a lot of hate cards. They might. They they might, especially since they know you're playing Mons Insurance. But you get such a good early start and hurt everyone else so badly. I, I, I'm willing to bet that that makes things really good. Yeah. How about you? I feel about it. I, I'm going to go... I'm going to go B. I think... I mean, your argument about how um, even if you were to break even, you sort of get the, you get the money early kind of thing... Yeah, that is compelling. I think that's a that's a, something I hadn't really considered. I think it's a really good point. Um, I'm just imagining, you know. Yeah, it's good. Maybe it's a maybe I go B plus. I I think it is pretty good. Um, 
It's certainly annoying. I, I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, but it, but I think they did a really good job balancing it because on the one hand, it's quite annoying, but on the other, I feel like people are just going to want to play all these hate cards. I, I sort of disagree with you on that point. Um, I think it's a... I'm going to go B. I, I, don't, I don't think... I. I don't know. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, All right, who we got cer- next? Certainly an interesting one. Okay, next up we have um, uh, we have Utopia Invests. Okay, Utopia Invest. Start with forty money, one steel and one titanium production, one uh, building tag, and your action is you can decrease any production to gain four resources resources of that kind. So that can be. That can be any of the uh, production, so plants, heat, steel, titanium, etc. So, how do we play this one? This one's tricky too. Um, I think what's cool about Utopia Invest is that um, I actually think its ability is better late game. Where, whereas a lot of the corporations, their ability, you know, these sort of special abilities, sort of they're better early, I guess, um, you know, just for the reason that playing cards early is usually better, like all the, the um, you know, production cards and stuff. But here's the thing about Utopia Invest. I think generically, you're most likely to want to reduce steel or titanium production and get cash. Yeah. Um, just because, like, converting an energy production into four energy it's not that great, right? I mean, you know, or, or getting four heat cubes or something. I mean, I think in general in the late game, you're you're going to want money because you can often convert that money into a lot of points. I think the one exception there is plants. I think doing the plant conversion could be really helpful. That's that is that's a good point. And like particularly like it's very common at the end of the game to end up with like six plants on your final production and this is a way yep. that you can just like get a plant or you know you can smooth out those uh you know plant draws or whatever but um the problem with this corporation is that like if you if you use the ability on something early it ends up i think it ends up hurting you um yeah like let's say you had a titanium production you know, let's say you activated this on turn one and you get four cubes, like it accelerates you a little bit, but then you're going to lose like six rounds of titanium production. So you definitely wouldn't want to do this on turn one. Right. With a titanium I, or steel. Yeah, I totally agree that I think the general strategy here is build up your especially steel and titanium economy uh, and then maybe midway through the game, start using the action to uh, just like kind of burst into a lot of steel or titanium right um and if you like if you imagine let's say it's turn six or seven and you start decreasing your titanium by one every round and you get these infusions of four titanium for example that means that like over the course of three or four rounds you're going to get a lot of titanium like 30 you know 36 worth of titanium and what you would have you know, you're you just are not going to generate the titanium cube. You know, for each generation. Yeah. Uh, or whatever. I mean, it comes out to end up. It ends up being like a fair amount of titanium. If you do that three or four generations in a row, you you are up a bunch of titanium. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I think this 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 corpse is actually pretty solid. So like so it pairs really well with anything that generates your steel and titanium. Like space elevator is super good for this. Um, but yeah, like just starting with the steel and titanium production on its own is really good. Uh, it's the thing with this corporation is I think it's kind of, it's just kind of boring, but it's good. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? I agree. I agree with you. Like at first blush, like I don't think the ability is really that great. Like it's, it's decent and definitely at the end of the game, it can give you a little boost, but you can't ignore the fact that you just start with five production. Right. I mean, that's just generically very good. Absolutely. And and then, th- you know, throw on top of that a little bonus of a building tag, and you already have a steel production. So, yeah, you're, you're looking at a builder. You're looking at a good path to builder. 
Yeah, I think this. I think the building tag is a little bit of a like a red herring on this one. Um, what what I have found increasingly is that when you want to be building, when you when you're gonna go to try and generate building tags, you you really want to be kind of all in on that. Like mining guild, for example. It's very common with mining guild that you get you'll get your steel production up to. Um, you know, like five or six, and then you just run out of cards of like building tag cards to play with all that steel. Yeah. You know, and so like when I play Mining Guild now, I I I almost try to avoid going into space, and I just try and take all building cards and generate as much um, you know um, steel production as possible. So for example, like when I'm playing Mining Guild, if I have like um, mining rights or something like that I'll, I'll often put this on a steel production square rather than titanium and not try and mix my um sure. my strategy whereas like utopia invest it it the titanium is good just it's just good to have titanium and be passive but if you're going to go for builder um it seems like it could be a little bit of a trap you know like you're going to be trying to take these titanium cards and play those but um that's I mean, gonna I don't slow, know, man. That's going to slow you down for getting builder. Like, I, no one. I, I think it's just an option. Like, no one. That tag doesn't mean you have to go for builder. So, like, I, I mean, I think I take your point. Um, but you could you could play this like you would mining guild and just go really heavy into steel. That, that's what I mean. But like, the thing is, like, you're you're going to do that, but then you're still going to be passively building up titanium, which means that you're going to be kind of pushed into the, like these titanium cards are going to come or space cards are going to come around and you're going to want to get them too. And I just think that you're going to be a little split in, in utopia. Like I don't think that builder is the natural, the natural milestone for utopia. Um, what is, I don't think it has a great one. I, I don't think that utopia has a perfect milestone. I mean, I think you're going to be drawn to builder, but you're going to be distracted and people that have better building corporations like, Mining Guild or Interplanetary Cinematics or even Tharsis, like those people are gonna just beat you to it. I don't know, man. I don't know if I agree with that. Like, it's Mining Guild, certainly yes. Um, I, like having a steel production and a building tag is a pretty strong start. Like, yeah, yes, you. I mean, I, you could get trapped into it and get beaten to it. Like, you're you're gonna have to play that as it comes. You know, if if yeah, if someone else is playing Mining Guild, maybe don't do that. Maybe don't go into try to get to builder, but I think for most corporations you're going to play against, this is a really good start to get to builder. Yeah, I mean it's it just has it's value just having the tag. I mean it's an, it it yeah. creates the option. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, I think Utopia Invest um, it's okay. I mean I think it's good. Um, I'm not like as excited to play it as I am some of the other corporations. I agree with you that it's just sort of generically good. Um, I think the the ability is is okay. I, I don't think you're going to use it much in the beginning of the game, and and I think in the end of the game, it's just going to provide you with a little bit of acceleration. So, what would you rate it? I mean, I think it's just a solid B plus. You know, I, I okay. mean, it may even just get to A minus just because of the the. Um, the production ability. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to say a minus like it's, it's, you know, I think, uh, we don't want to rate it that high just cause it's kind of boring, but I think it's really good. Um, I, I think it's just solid. It's very strong. I mean, one thing about, um, yeah, I mean, it's just good. It's just a good corporation. Yep. Okay. Cool. Next we have, um, uh, now this one's, this one's interesting. Um, Factorum. Yeah. All right. So with Factorum, you start with 37 money. You increase, you have a one steel production. You got a energy and a building tag. Then every generation, you have an action where you can either generate one power production or spend three money to get a building, uh, building card. So presu presumably that means you keep flipping cards over until you find a building card. Um, so this is really interesting. What do you think, Nate? 
yeah, I think this corporation is really interesting. Um, so just to just to clarify, so you can you can bump your power if you have no energy resources. Oh yeah, right, right, right. So um, what's interesting about that is that it does create like a little sub game where you kind of want to keep your power at zero. Yeah. Right. Because if you if you're generating power there, you're going to have those resources in your box. And then it, it, it's some it's pretty hard to get rid of those. I mean, there are cards that let you do it, but it's hard to to like get rid of them to the exact number so that you'd be at zero. Yeah. Um, the way that that particular ability plays out, though, is very strong, which is that in the beginning of the game, there's a lot of cards that let you decrease your energy production. <laughs> So you could use the ability to generate an energy production and then immediately use it to get rid of that energy production to play a card. So, for example, yep. um, you know, like a really good one would be like building industries, right? Like you can f you can increase your power for free and then just play building industries almost as a free roll. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's really good for the 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 one energy cost cards. Like uh, another one would be like a Rad Chem Factory. Yeah, like same idea. Like Radcam Factory is just, I mean, paying eight to bump your economy by two and get a building tag. I mean, that's really good card. And now you don't have to. You know, I mean, the energy just comes for free. Yeah. I mean, so another, they, they, another, another like classic one that people want to you know get down early, which it can be hard to get them down early. Um, are are these like city cards? Um, yeah. You know, like Cupola City. I mean, you just get, I mean, basically it just removes that energy requirement for you. Yep. Pretty dang strong. Um, yeah, so it's not really about building energy with this. It's about powering other cards. Yeah. Now, it's worth noting that that gets, it gets more tricky at the end of the game because at some point you are going to have energy production and then you really can't use that ability as much. You may or may not. I I don't necessarily think you do. Like maybe you strictly use it for when you need it. Yeah, I mean that's possible. Um, that's a good point. Uh, maybe maybe you just never generate an energy economy and you always have that option. I mean, I guess I was thinking the play pattern for this. Um, well, let, let's talk about the second ability, which I also think is pretty yeah. good. So. You pay three credits and you basically get to the way this ability has worked in on other cards is that you flip them from the top, revealing them to everybody until you hit a building tag, and then all the you take that into your hand and then the rest go to the, the discard pile. Yep. So like if you have a card in your opener that lets you convert energy into, you know, production, you're gonna use the top part of this corporation. If you don't have those cards, you're just going to use this as a card drawing mechanism. Right. So I, I guess the play pattern that I was thinking would be early on, you're going to draw cards. At some point, you're going to have the cards that boost your production or like a city or something. And then you'll use the energy ability. And all the while, you're, you're going to be moving towards Builder. Yeah. So we were talking about Race to Builder with the previous corp. This, don't do that against this corp because this is really strong. Uh, strong path the builder here. Yeah, I think those two abilities are really cool. Like they really complement each other. Um, yeah, not to mention, by the way, like some of these cards that we we're bringing up, like Cupola, they're building cards. So like you could you could draw into Cupola, for example, or like a yeah, yeah. All of these cards, all of those cards that convert energy into resources, they're all building tags. Exactly. So it's like, perfect. yeah, it's a really good combo. So you also have an energy tag and a building tag. So one an interesting thing about the energy tag is it it does get you into certain cards that require energy, right? Um, uh, certain, yeah, like energy tags, like fusion power. Yeah, it's hard. It's, it can be hard to get this card down sometimes. I I, th I think we've we've struggled with it in the past, and having one one energy tag is nothing to sneeze at. No, you're totally right. And I mean, this card is really good. Like fusion power is very strong. Super good. Now the funny thing is, like, you may actually not want to play fusion power with Factorum for right. the reasons that we were discussing. Right. Um, but this is just an example. I mean, there's there's other cards that require energy, and um, you know, like. 
having a tag is just you know it's good it's just generically good yeah it's a minor thing about the corp but yeah it's uh it's i don't know this 37 money is pretty decent it's not great not bad either 37 is pretty low it's not it's not terrible though it's pretty terrible (laughs) (laughs) all right i stand corrected it's terrible um, um, it's pretty bad. I mean, you do get a steel a steel production, so that's good. But thirty seven is not a lot. So, do you think do you think it's too low for this? I think that really is the question. Um, I mean, I think that um, if if you have a card like I mean, imagine having a card like building industries in your hand to start with. I mean, think about that. Like, basically. You're on turn. If you can play this on turn one, you've spent six, and now you suddenly have steel production at three. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, at that point, you have a really good kickstart to this corporation, and you got a second building tag here. Yeah, sorry, you're saying it's a bit more card dependent. I don't know. I I think. I mean, the other problem is that there are a lot of building tags in the game, which means that which that's not a problem. But what it means is that when you do the second ability to go search for a building tag, like you're often going to whiff on that. Like it's not going to be something that's really great for you. Um, getting, getting free power all the time is, is really good. I, I mean, it, it, that is a big, big bonus, but I do think that it's somewhat dependent on you being able to play, have those cards. Like if you have Cupola or Radcam or building industries or these things, that require energy like this corporation is really really strong because it's basically giving you 11 free credits yeah i mean i would personally say it is it is more card dependent than some of the other corps because like for yeah for the reasons you just said like it's it's not as generically good as if you were increasing your steel or something right i i think that this corporation though could be very very powerful i mean depending on depending on what what kind of cards you have in your opener I think that this is going to be a very, very strong for builder, and um, and it could have some very explosive starts. I agree. Yeah, um, I like it you... too. I just think it's a cool corporation. I think it's a, I think it's a B. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think it. You know, like if I were playing a tournament for money, I, I, this would not be my first choice. But uh, most likely, like I would rather have something generically powerful like Credit Core, um, but. I think this has a lot of potential and could be very good if you have the right cards. Yeah, I was also going to say B. Uh, it's it's uh, could be swingy, but could be powerful. Could not. Okay. Um, All right. So so the last, our last corp. Yeah, last corporation. Um, well, uh, it's actually um, specific to. Um, it's actually s- specific to uh, the turmoil. Box and I don't have the photo uploaded. I just realized. Oh, you don't. Oh, um, oops. <laughs> well, here. why don't we just talk about it real quick? I can put it on the. I can put it on the monitor. <laughs> wow, great. Um, you so you read? start with third. I, I can't read it. You're okay. gonna have to. You're gonna have to read it out. So I it's mean, like the. It's basically. It's called um, Septum Tribus Tribus. Okay. I, I have it now. I can read it. Okay. Um, so you start with 36 money. Um, you start with a wild tag. So that's cool. Um, you gain two money for each party where you have at least one delegate. So why don't you like quickly talk about the delegate system in Turmoil so you, that can be understood. Yeah. So, I mean, um, for those of you who haven't read the rules, basically Turmoil creates like a Senate. And there's several different factions in the Senate. And every generation, each um, each player gets to put one delegate in one of the uh, in one of the factions in one of the Senate factions. Um, and then you can also spend additional like five credits as an action to add a delegate to one. And then there are cards that let you put delegates into the different factions. So the way that all of this breaks down is that this action is basically probably over the course of the game going to average to give you three to four credits per turn. And in some cases could be a lot more if you, if you really invest in it. And, um, you know, so I would think about it as basically a starting economy of somewhere between, you know, four and six per turn. 
Okay, so basically this this corp, it makes it so you'll want to spread out your delegates amongst the different factions, right? That's right. Which which makes them a little weaker in the sense that you you're not as likely to get the bonuses of like co- combining the, of like controlling the Senate, right? So you're kind of you're gonna kind of be more of a follower than the than the leader here, I guess. Um. So yeah, I get, we won't talk about this too much, but what's your feeling on like? Do you think like that is that powerful getting too many per delegate? I don't know. I mean. Um... To, I haven't really played turmoil that much. It's hard for me to know how powerful the the sort of turmoil mechanic will be. Um, in general, like my feeling with all of the expansions is that you know they're okay, but my favorite way to play the game is just base game. But I do like all the additional corporations that have come out of the expansions. So like Septum Travis, for example, like I this is not a corporation I'll probably play with very much because I'm I'm most likely just to play the base game. Okay, but I don't know. Like, just take a take a stab at how powerful you think this is going to be. I don't think it's going to be that powerful. No, I mean, it it is going to generate you some some cash per turn, and I think the wild card is pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of times when having that extra tag for whatever you want to do is good. I mean, we were just talking about that. Just having a random power tag on Factorum is good, but. Um, 36 cash is not a lot of starting money and while this no. does generate I mean compare this to like Utopia Invest which basically starts you off with 5 credits per turn which is already I think going to be on a par with Septum Trevis it starts you off with more cash and the action generates you more uh, stuff at the end um, you know like I would just take Utopia Invest over this almost and every single time there's how many parties I think there's five or six. Five or six. So you're getting like 10 or 12 money maximum? Maximum. But then the thing is, the way, and this just gets into the rules, like the way it works is that every generation the ruling party comes in and then all the delegates are removed from them. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, so like you're, um, I, I guess it's possible that you could then place your, because each generation you get to put a delegate somewhere. So you could take that and put it back in there and, and get, um, yeah, you know, more money. So I mean, it, it could generate you a fair amount of money. Um, I don't know. I it's it's hard to say without without really getting a sense for how powerful um, the Senate really is, you know, or whatever. Yeah, because like putting doesn't like uh, putting delegates in there get you also resources and stuff or something like that. It can it can generate some resources for you. Um, but you, I think you have to be the the one with the most delegates, right? So like, you're if you're doing the strategy to generate money, you're not going to be that person very often, right? Because you're going to want to spread the delegates out. Gotcha. Okay. Well, you know, well, uh, you can, as you guys can, if you've watched us before, you know, we don't really like the expansions very much, so <laughs> we don't really play with them. But we'll see what happens after we play turmoil because i think it is an it thing is among the more interesting expansions to come out for this game yeah i, think I guess it cha- my changes thing, it i guess my thing though is that i i feel and this is i we've talked about this on stream before but I, we can just mention again um the base game by itself is superb right i mean it, it's just it's just really really good and i i don't think that most of the expansions add game mechanics that are fun i think it's just they just add complexity um and i have i have like sort of quibbles with each of them in turn the one that i that i dislike the most is preludes and that's the one that yeah it seems like everybody else likes the most i know um, i totally agree i hate preludes yeah i do too i think preludes uh really ruins the milestones like many times like i mean some of the preludes just start you with like four energy or something and you're playing on the you know, Elysium board or whatever with the Energizer, and you're like, "Oh, turn one, I'll just take the Energizer." It's like doop de doo. Right. Yeah. To, it's to the point where I will not play this game with Preludes anymore. Yeah, I, I think Preludes is really, really bad, and I, I hate to say that for people that really like that, but it, it's the truth. Preludes is is just it doesn't. It breaks it. 
it breaks it. it and it shortens the game by a bunch which um i don't think the game needs to be shortened i think it's it actually well, i don't yeah i don't mind that part of it like it's, it's like making the game quicker and snappier that's cool but like it breaks it so like it's there's pointless well it does a couple things though so the reason that the length of the game is important is that one of the things about terraforming that's great is that you can win different ways right like you can be a, a corporation that's trying to end the game very quickly um, and like punish people who have spent a bunch of time building up engines. You could be a long game strategy where you're trying to build, you know, do the exact what I just described, like spend the first five or six generations just building a, a huge engine and then really cash in in generations 11 and 12. Um, but Preludes gets rid of all of that because in Preludes, if everybody starts with, with a huge boost, um, the game's going to end a lot faster. Like you just have more resources early. Yeah. And so it makes it more difficult to really get a good late game strategy. The second thing it does is it, it creates these like weird synergies where sometimes people will just get a broken combination of corporation yep. and preludes. And that makes it very unfun because you can tell who's going to win almost from the start. Right. Um, and if you're if you're out there thinking like, well, that, that never happens. No, it happens. Like I've, I've played with Preludes probably four different times and it's broken it three times. Right? Yeah. It, it actually might even be more than that. It, 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 it is very possible. Yeah. And the other thing is that um, that lull that people complain about in generations two through three, like, you know, like they say, well, you start off with all this stuff and then, you know, you kind of spend a bunch of money on turn one and then there's two or, you know, there's generations yeah. two and three where not much happens. That is actually an important catch up period where like if you don't have good cards in your opening 10, you can just pass on turn one and see what you get out of generations two and three cards. And like, yeah, you've lost a round of production compared to some of the other people, but they because they spent all their resources in, in, in generation one they're not usually doing a whole lot in gens two and three which means that that gives you some time to come up with another strategy and in preludes yeah. if you do that you're basically just dead because the game ends on generation eight or nine yeah. um anyway. Uh, anyway i don't we this doesn't need to be a prelude rant we're it's talking not a, about it's turmoil not a rant about here. Preludes, but just to explain why i probably will never play septum tribus um <laughs> it's because i it's unlikely that um that I'll be playing with Turmoil. Even it's unlikely I'll be playing Turmoil expansion all the time. Like it might be fun to mix it up every once in a while, and it does look better than the other expansions. Like it, you know, in terms of really changing the game a little bit. Um, but I still think the best is just base game. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I definitely want to play with Turmoil a few times. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I think that'll do it for this part two here. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, you know, uh, play Turmoil, see how you like it, let us know how you like it. Um, and we'll be back again at some point with the second part of the base game corporations. And, uh, of course, look out for some new gameplay videos, some new streams. And, um, yeah, subscribe to us uh, at Cardboard Mars on Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch. And, uh, yeah, that'll do it for now. Uh, goodbye from me and Nate. 